What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Flying Blog, coming to you on this Thursday. So, look, I worked out my trainer, and I did a boxing class. So, your girl's here looking crazy, and we're a little tired. But I had to do this one. And there's several ones I have in the catalog that Peter is working on. He's editing to get them out to you guys. Good good trucking update on, on Sunday because, you know, <laughs> people been asking. And then also I have several other videos talking about, you know, what to do with $1,000, what to do with $500, what to do with $100. Um, you know, if you really want to turn your first day life around in a week, what does that look like? But if you don't know who I am, my name is Erica Williams with Classy Klein Blog, author of the Smartphone Millionaire book, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand. Uh oh, someone said there's Echo. My, okay, I see where it is. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Can you guys hear me better now? I hope you can hear me better now. You should be hearing me better now. Uh, put a one in the comments if you can hear me better now, which you should be able to. Uh, a lot of people have asked, you know, well, you know, Erica, everybody can't start a business. This has been everybody's favorite trumpet to blow around me. I don't know why this channel has always been about progression, uh, growing yourself, changing your life. So I don't know where that's coming from. But I want to start it out here. Uh, B, uh, Bees, she put on a great thing. She talks about being a six-figure tech person. Uh, even in tech, if you talk to a lot of people in tech, they start out at 85000 But I'm going to go ahead and kind of share the screen so we can all be on the same uh, list of like, what am I talking about? And again, let me go to the community page and show it because I think it's important to pull it from where I'm talking about it from. And, and, and feel free in the comment chat to t say how many people have a job or have a business. I'm okay with both, but I just want to address this because I know y'all be like, I didn't get a job, Erica. Okay. Let me go ahead and share the screen here. And drop your city and state in the chat. Um, you know, folks, I love knowing where you're from and, and, and where is it coming from. Sorry, right, here, let's go ahead and kick it off. All right. So uh, she put... And, and I'm literally copying this from Instagram. She put, look, the only people who are telling you that nine to five is corny or that entrepreneurship is better than having a nine to five are internet marketers. Don't ever forget that. 86% of entrepreneurs make less than a hundred grand a year. The grass isn't always greener. Now she's been making six figures since she was 24 in tech. Already an anomaly. OK, so let's go ahead and go there. Seventy six percent of working Americans. That means 76 percent out of one hundred and fifty million working Americans only make thirty thousand dollars a year or less. Or le like there's a whole 20, 30 million that make like twenty thousand dollars or less. OK, so for me, as a person who's worked in corporate America, was like, no, thanks, had a business close that business and then try to go back to corporate America for me to beg and plead and try to kiss ass for 40 K a year makes no sense. It makes absolute no sense to me. None whatsoever. Again, a lot of times when you see these trucking videos where men are making six figures in trucking, they're kind of in their own truck doing their own thing. The only thing that's their headache is what waiting at the, the warehouse, people driving like crazy people on the highway, several factors, right? Tickets, uh, but if you actually look at this country, majority of men drive in their jobs, whether it's local delivery, it's over the road. Like we've broke this down in other videos where you have, you know, five million guys who are like, I'm a driver. Well, I really out of that, it's like three million are over the road and the rest, like 85 percent are local guys, local drivers. So, I, again, when you hear these numbers. I'm going to break it down via the numbers. That's that's all I'm going to do. Now, again, I'm, I'm going to go here because people going to people going to go there and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and go there some more. Why every female business owner should make one hundred thousand. Now, what is the current problem we're having right now in our society? We just had half a million women get laid off last year in 2020. Some by choice and some by force and some by they had to. Uh, right now, I, I think I posted on my Facebook page. They aren't even able to open like one fourth of the child care centers are able to open. And I've talked about this for years. The pendulum always swings back. Right. Uh, a lot of women could 
I'm going to just be nice, could live on their husband's salary of 40, 50,000 a year. It would just mean old girl got to cook every day. Y'all might have to sell a car. Y'all might have to move further out into the wilderness or what would people call the wilderness when they're 30 minutes outside the city. And he might have to commute every day. That just is the truth. A lot of women could live on their husband's salary if they gave up their newer car, if they didn't have student loans. Don't kill the messenger. But this is what we're seeing. No matter what these young men, angry young men are saying on the Internet, divorce is at all time lows since 2016. Why? You can't go nowhere if you ain't got no money. <laughs> you can't go nowhere if you ain't got no babysitter. You can't go nowhere if you ain't got nobody to help you. See, what people really forget is in our society, uh, this number we're living by are people who are living in cities. There's a lot of people that live out in the middle of who do it, who done it can make 40K a year and live a good life. Let's just be honest, okay? But for this conversation, because people love, everybody ain't meant to be a boss, Erica. They just ain't meant to be a boss. If you can't see the writing on the wall that these companies are going to push at least 80% of y'all to 1099 lifestyle, where they don't pay no taxes, they don't deal with your stuff, they just it's on you to figure, finish your job out. If you didn't see that with Uber and Lyft, you didn't see that with Airbnb, you didn't see that in this remote working economy, good luck. Good luck to you. So again, let's go here. Why every female business owner should make 100K a year? Uh, this woman is Rose Radford. Okay, she's a Rose. So you know what I'm trying to say here. Uh, unless you're making 100K in revenue, then you might as well go back to your old job. These were the exact words of a highly respected business mentor yesterday, last year. I wanted to punch him. So let's pause. Pause. I just told you. 76% of working Americans make $30,000 or less a year. So this woman who has this business and someone told her if she ain't making hundred K, she should go home to what? To traffic, to heels and outfits and bad attitudes at work for 30 K a year. I think it's not. I think it's not. Uh, and someone said in the comments, well, Erica, you can be a black male and make 41,000 a year and you're middle class. Yes, and I'm going to go there. Kevin Samuels talked about 51% of black males are middle class. You can make 35,000 a year and be considered middle class, y'all. Is 35,000 middle class in Houston, Texas? Is 35,000 middle class in Atlanta? Is 35,000 middle class in Dallas? Is 35,000 middle class in Virginia Beach, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., New York, Jamaica, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan? Is 35,000 middle class? No, it's not. It's just not. Like, like, let's not play these games and these semantics. They're not. Will you have to, as a woman, and, and I'll go with another stat, 77% of wives work. They don't work full time. Majority of women work part time or some kind of partial work. Why? Let's go there. You're subsidizing the fact your husband can't fully take care of the whole family. Don't shoot the messenger. That is what it is. You're subsidizing. You know, it just is what it is. Sis. I'm sorry. Don't get mad with me. OK, so you're subsidizing. So when someone talks about one hundred thousand ain't no money, um, I'm always confused on what planet do they live on? Have they not driven the streets of Austin or Texas or Florida or New York and seen the homeless? Have they not drove the trailer parks, even in Alaska? Trailer parks. Have they not driven those roads and seen those trailer parks? To say 100000 is no money is a very elitist, classist thing. And I'm going to say this, and I mean it in all kindness I can provide. All my friends who are white, Asian, and Nigerian, I'm going to go there, Nigerian, yeah, they're engineers, but the first chance they got to leave that job, they bounce too. And they making 120, 150, 180,000 a year. High stress, high corporate jobs. Why are they leaving these jobs? I'll break it down to you. A majority of them, I would say out of the group of people I know, group of people I associate in the urban black lead here, I would say majority of them own rental property or own an Airbnb. Uh, they own a lot of assets. They own a lot of investments that pay some monthly money. And they just realize I don't have to put up with nobody's crap at work because I have a certain amount of money too that comes in from other projects. Again, how did we get to one in 10 Asian people have a business? 
one in 34 whites have a business, one in 54 Hispanics have a business, and one in 100 blacks have a business. Now you may say, well, 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 black people, that's right, we have the lowest entrepreneurship and yet the highest unemployment. Do we not see the coincidence? Do we not see it? I'll continue. Now, as let's go back to Rose's article, Rose's Rafford. She was upset. She did not like it. She felt uh, self-doubt, worried, because let's be honest, if you look at graphs, uh, and I'll try to find another graph, I really did look earlier, the majority of women make about 30,000 to 40,000, a majority of single men make 40,000. Don't, uh, don't fight me on this, I'm gonna pull this graph up because I've shared it on here before and y'all were shocked. Married men, whoop, why? Because a majority of our society, if these women could not, if they were married, again, prime example, Michelle Obama, they said, Michelle Obama, did you help Barack become the president? She said, any man I would have married would have became the president. Now, you're going to laugh me like, oh, that's black women being saucy. Blah, 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 blah. She meant that. Look at Dick Cheney's wife. She said something exactly similar. Dick Cheney's white wife. OK. And people yet are like, oh, feminism. No, we live in a society where women weren't really allowed to work at a certain point, 50s to 70s. And so they were very focused on their husband seceding, pushing him out daily, encouraging him daily, getting him focused on whatever task. Like, you're going to have this job, baby. You're going to make this money because we all depend on you. See, you had a different, you had a different breed of, of uh, husbands back then, a different breed of women as well, because they knew. I got to make you prop you up because if I don't prop you up and I don't pump you up and I don't support you, we might be homeless. OK. This is happening even to today. I was getting a massage before we left for Alaska. We're sitting in there and this woman's talking to her husband. She's like, yeah, da, 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 da. And I'm like, she is like pumping him up. I don't know what she's pumping him up for, but she is like selling him on some kind of dream. And he's like, yeah, I can do it. He's still in a button up tie and slacks. She's in relaxed clothes. So clearly old girl don't work. And we had the massage place at 450, like 445. So he must have just got off work, but she been off work. Looked like all day. OK, so I can see the conundrum that people are experiencing um, with just being accepting the fact that there's levels to our society and we're not all equal because we don't we don't all live equal lives. I'm sorry. I know it's wrong, uh, but I'm just going to finish it out here. Sorry. On average, 39 percent, let me say that again, 39 percent of all businesses, white, black, Hispanic, whoever, bring in over 100,000 a year. Did you hear what I said there? 39 percent of all businesses bring over 100K. So that means about 61 percent. Let me, my numbers are terrible. 51 percent. Y'all help me out on there. 61 percent of all businesses bring in less. Less. So you're already talking about people bringing in less. But would I rather make 100K in my own business or 35,000 at somebody's job? Just saying. All right. So for women, this figure is much lower. Only 12% 12, 12 of female led businesses bring in more than 100,000 a year. This percentage is reducing every year. I'm going to go ahead and be very transparent on this page. I don't care who comes on here. I don't care who talks smack to me. I don't care. You don't know my bills and you don't know my accounting. Um, but you can look up our company. I'm going to just say it. you can look up our company and you can look up that we got the PPP loan for several companies. And every single company I have does over 100K. One does about half a mil. You'll see that if you go dig and dig in public document information. And, and again, uh, we have phones that ring all the time because once we got our PPP, they were like, damn, you got that my PPP? That means you had to be making this. Okay, so I'm gonna just put that out there. So I'm in the higher bracket of the higher bracket of women entrepreneurs. Just gonna say it. But you don't know my outgo, so it doesn't matter even if I have a lot of in-go, okay? So we'll just put it that way, all right? The U.S. is often good proxy because blah, blah, blah. It talks about, you know, weird deaths. Anyway, you can read it for yourself. Um, people say it's because women focus on their families. 25% of female entrepreneurs say this is the case because a lot of times women build a business that fits their family lifestyle. AKA realtors who only sell like $30,000 a year in homes. Um, you know, even nurses, nurses get to a point where they're like, I can only do three days a week, three 12 hour shifts. And that's it. I got to go home to my family. A lot of times, even in business, this carry over. 
I'm building and designing my life now to leave uh, a lot of my daily operations so I can focus on family. And family means babies. So not pregnant, just clearing that up. <laughs> know somebody might take it there. So we're going to make and grow businesses that do what? Give us a reduced amount of stress, reduced amount of tension, and reduced amount of staff. So again, uh, he basically said, if you're not making 100K, you're living below your potential. Okay. So go on down here some more. He said, with a profitable 100K turnover, you can build a healthy cash reserve in case you fall ill, get sick, economy dies, you want to take time off for your children, you want to take a extended holiday. So yes, it's important not to just get by in your business. You want to create a real business. Why is that? Systems. System, 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 systems, okay? And again, you can go read a lot of this, um, but they tell you to aim for that number. And the reason you should aim for that number is because it's actually really possible. So this article is really good. Go, go read it. Uh, I'm not going to bore you to death reading the whole thing to you. Again, another one here, women entrepreneurs pay themselves 28% less than men do. You know why? Because men don't give up. they like, hey, cut me the check, bro. Cut me the check. I'm Chad. I'm not paying that crap. Cut me the check. And I respect them for it. You know why? Because men don't care. Women were all like, my employees, all oh, my staff. I'm so worried about my staff. No, no, no. Men be like, what you want to do? Quit, quit. <laughs> and I learned that a lot in trucking. Uh, honestly, a lot of horror stories from drivers in trucking, a lot of horror stories from other men who own trucking companies and basically them having to be a jerk essentially is what they said to get their way with drivers. So again, there's a lot of where we can go on this, but I'm going to get it back to talking about <clears throat> why do people feel this way? A lot of people want to just show up, right? Um, they just want to show up somewhere. And, and again, this shirt is called Gold Darters, not Gold Diggers. A lot of people want to just show up somewhere to work and, and do their work and bounce. We talked about this last show about um, people in construction, uh, people in warehouse work. They just want to show up, leave me alone, and go home. What you realize is women are in a lot of administrative stuff, a lot of paperwork, a lot of data. And for the amount of headache you put in, are you really getting paid that quality? Like even now, when I talk to people in the comment section about hiring employees, people are very hesitant. We talk about it in a rise twenty percent and also middleman to millions. A lot of people can have a whole manager at their job for twenty five thousand, twenty five dollars an hour. Straight up. I mean, literally, literally. Twenty five dollars an hour have a whole manager and they just want the title of manager. I've talked about this in automation videos I posted earlier this year. What you're going to see is a lot of companies are going, yeah, they're going to pay you 50K a year, but they're going to work you like a dog. You're going to do the work of three people. Not only are you going to do the work for three people, you're also going to go to trips and conferences and they're going to make you take trainings out the yam. Uh, prime example, my friend is a welder. He got a job offer for 150K a year. He was over the moon. He's like, yes, this is so great. I'm so excited. They told him he was going to have to fly 25 weeks out of the year to train other people because we're this country short on welders. So he just did the math. Okay, they're going to pay me to fly half the year, 150,000. I mean, are you going to book every hotel for me? Are you going to do this? And a lot of stuff in their contract was talking about reimbursements and money. You have to pay out your own pocket and different things. And I told him, I was like, I don't know about that one. I don't know if that would be worth it to you. That's what it's going to take for some of these high quality jobs, these high level, high stress, high corporate jobs, because a company that's making millions of dollars. And I'm going to just tell you, when I went to the Grant Cardone Ventures training, they're saying every employee they expect in their company to make to make them two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if I hire you at fifty k a year and I'm expecting two hundred fifty thousand dollars of revenue to come from you, you're gonna have to work, baby. So so again, um, a lot of people got it twisted. They just got it twisted. If you're not Hey, ain't no females in welding. It was a man. It's a man I'm talking about. But a lot of people really oversimplify the fact that, 
oh, Erica, you know, so many businesses fail, so many businesses fail. Again, are they talking about food service businesses? Because food restaurants fail at high numbers anyway. A lot of the people you don't see and read the book Entrepreneurship, Illusions of Entrepreneurship, it's a good one. A lot of small, low tech businesses, like I talk about Middleman and Millions, it's a guy whose wife, he's married, she works, he's about 44 to 48 years old. He has experience in a certain type of thing and he just starts a company out of it. Now, when I talk about medical supplies, people are like, oh, diabetic test strips. No, I have a friend who literally sells, you know, pee pans and walkers and canes and he has a little shop over here in Austin. Ain't nobody go to that store. That's just the storefront and it's off on a little side road. Nobody would even find it. It's over there um, off Lamar. Yeah, it's off Lamar. And I drove by it one day and was like, oh, man, that's nice. Nobody's in there. Not a person, not a soul. Why? Because he can sit at home and pretty much check on all the contracts he has with the different hospitals. And they just ship the stuff out. They just ship the stuff out. So, again, and that's a medical supply business that he makes heavy six figures on. Right. We have another guy who does pilot, a uh, pilot, basically what Glenn and Cambridge do. They buy pallets, wonder pallets, you know, mystery pallets that close companies, liquidated different things. They buy the pallets and they break them down in their garage and sell the different items on eBay, Amazon, all those places. Resale business. This isn't super complicated. Now, are there businesses that are complicated that need a lot of people that you got to learn how to hire staff for, do all that stuff? For sure. For sure, there are very complicated businesses that require a lot of staff, but there's a lot of people doing e-commerce, selling one or two items, selling T-shirts. Um, you know, the other day we looked up a pool company trying to sell. Like, uh, there's a reason I keep pulling up buybizsell.com for you guys to show you a lot of people are, and I'm going to give this example, and, I, and this is no disrespect to my family. I have a family member who's like, yeah, that's why white people rich, you know, because they save all their money, you know. They save every dollar. And I'm like, no, that's not, no, that's not it. And they use it as an excuse to be extremely cheap. It's exhausting. Because we'll be like, yeah, that thing is $10. $10? I mean, we could go to Walmart. I'd be like, it, that's not how, white people aren't rich because they won't spend $10. Like, okay, come on, right? So a lot of this is this imaginary built up conversation, which really allows you not to change, right? Because I actually, there's a girl, I've, I think her name is Kat Theo, and I'm no disrespect. She's a wonderful woman, wonderful channel, very energetic. Her whole channel is like, hey, how to get 10K a month, how to do this. I literally watched seven videos just to like be honest and critique for someone who asked me to critique it. I was like, if you just did four of these videos and actually did it, like not just watching her talk about it, but actually did it, actually created some ebooks, actually created some low, you know, content books, actually put a little of these things together, you would wake up in about three months and have 10K a month coming in. See, the problem is y'all want to quit y'all job like yesterday and then have 10K a month coming in when you've never made more than 3K a month. Okay, so this is where this angst and anger about business comes in because a lot of you go, well, you know, it's so hard. You got to be rich to start your own business. I mean, I'm literally in a co-working offices, multiple offices space. And a lot of people in here are literally on their computer just. And then you ask them, hey, what do y'all do? Oh, we do data for this company, data security, or we do like just little funky, weird companies that clearly are making them probably 250K a year. Gross, right? Uh, but they're in these offices with two or three staff. If they pay, I mean, there's one office. I, I don't think they pay anybody more than 30K over there. Two of them doing that, doing them systems and the, the owner, the woman bounces out. There's others, individual. There's one guy who's in here always coding. His scream is like, like the matrix. Every time I go by it, it's exhausting. And, uh, you know, he's literally just doing that every day when I go by. A lot of y'all are building up these gook, these boogeymen in your head, right? That, oh my God, business is so hard. And the thing of the truth of the matter is, listen, when you really talk to many people who started a business, just the fact they had the courage to start, what really destroys a lot of people in business is one, lack of cash flow, and two, lack of systems. See, the problem, what really, I can't tell everybody's business like I want to, they'll get 20, 30, 40K lump sums but they don't have no consistent systems. So the money go away. And then they on the phone me like, I can't believe I'm about to do this, Eric. And I'm like, why? 
You just need to do A, B, and C. Oh, yeah, I never think about that. Systems, like our blocking your time. When I started right now to SOPs, I was like, oh, that's it? Yeah, like you have to really inventory what you do. Inventory your time, inventory what you do. And the, the problem is most people who start a business are more creative and hate the tightness and the, the systematicness of work at an office. And that's why they kind of go off the rails. Hey, thank you so much for the $10 cash app. I pr appreciate that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not talking to the S today. I'm being very clear. Um, hey, woo, opulence. Con congrats. Don't worry yourself out. And what ends up happening is a lot of people start a business, but then they don't, they literally grind for the next five years, the first two, three years of the business side, because they can't predict it, right? And again, I know a lot of people aren't even doing great systems because I get on the phone with them. And I'm like, oh, great. You made 70K last year. That's great. What does your QuickBooks say you did for each quarter? QuickBooks? Yeah. What does it say? Ooh, I don't know. I don't use QuickBooks. H how do you know you made 70K? Well, I'm just looking at my gross. I'm like... No, you need to track it and measure it and understand it. Most of these programs and conferences you see out here are teaching you systems. See, everybody's like, oh, I can start YouTube myself tomorrow. Then two years or a year into YouTube, they mad and they want to quit. They never set it up like a business. They set it up to go viral. They set it up to do silly stuff. That's why when I'm on here and O'Shea making, like, makes a joke called them struggle streams or whatever, you know, I laugh about that because I go, as long as you get the information out, as long as you market your information, market your products, who cares, right? Um, even this week, uh, I think I put it in the chat for you guys. Uh, if you are in my courses and you've actually taken them and I can see your email, your name, so don't play. Click this link. I'll talk to you for 15 minutes because a little bit of it, I'm going to get a little testimony out you. And the rest of the time, I'm going to help you break down what the problem is. 15 minutes ain't long. Don't get crazy. But I'm doing this because I want to prove a point one. I want to talk to at least 100 of y'all. I mean, I have over 10,000 students. Any one of y'all can book the links, right, for certain time frames. The reason I want to talk to you is because I know a lot of people aren't fully applying themselves or they're not hour blocking their time to set themselves up. That just is what it is. Like, that's the number one thing when I get on phone with people. That's the problem. So if you're in the chat, you can see it in the chat. You can book it in there. If you haven't taken my course, I'll look you up by your name and I'll know. So don't be crazy with it. Our staff will kind of vet it. But that's that's how I know a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I'd rather work a, work a job. OK, well, let's give you a prime example. Um, we had on Tech Tuesdays where, you know, hey, you can get these three certifications and go get into a job. Well, the problem was a lot of people were scared to apply. We talked about that one time. They were even scared to apply. They've got Four out of five things that people need and they're scared to apply. Another thing, they're not filling out their LinkedIn. How, how can a recruiter find you if you fill out no LinkedIn? There you go. Full-time career with stock investments and looking to vending machine businesses. Congrats, Sherlock Holmes. There you go. Justina Adams. I mean, again, I literally could, inside my classes, inside the Ride 20%, I think we'll be back on next Tuesday. I won't be traveling anywhere next week. Back on Tuesday and Wednesday, we literally can break down what's a hundred thousand dollar business. You know, what's an e-commerce business that's going to make money? Even at the Classy Climb Tour, we've got Money Madu on, who's going to show you how you did six figures in six months. We're going to show you Todd Millie, who did a mill in a year. We're going to show you some of the people, and I'm going to talk about it on the Rise Twenty Percent. Some of the people who are literally on the computer, if they actually did one tenth of what they talk about, they'd have money in their pocket. And the problem is, people get over leveraged in debt, and they get mad. There you go. Yeah, stun on the ground. People get wore out. There's a lot of people living in the middle who done it. Who done it? And why? 76%. 41,000 is not middle class. Like, like, oh, Eric, I live in Ohio and the houses are 56,000. If you make 35K a year and the house is 56,000, why aren't you buying the houses? This gets back to the true, like, we got to really be honest here. When people are making 35000 a year, but they got student loan debt and they got car loan debt and they can't even afford to buy a 50K house in Ohio or Virginia or Tennessee, the first thing they'll tell you, well, Grant Cardone said don't buy no house. Grant Cardone ain't making uh, three grand a month. That's you, boo. You have to really do some math on 
how can you reduce your expenses? You're paying a thousand five hundred in rent a month or a thousand four hundred in rent a month when you can have a house and the mortgage be three fifty. Come on, make it make sense for you. Come on now. It, it's considered yet yeah, in the middle of nowhere. There you go. 35K in DC means you rent a bedroom part time and utilize food bank. <laughs> 35k is middle class if you have roommates and get food stamps. Yeah, I mean it's really it's getting kind of delusional out here, and that's why you see this extreme push to this van life. This extreme push to uh, there's a young man. I'm not knocking him. He's a good channel. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna give him a little shout out. Seven figures marketing. I think I think that's him. Um, I hate it. Like a lot of YouTube reviews I've been doing. If you gonna sit in your room with a bed and a laptop and just you know buy promo shout outs on Instagram. Yeah, you can make money off ClickBanks. <laughs> yeah, you can make money off a lot of these things. I am okay with that young man utilizing his eight hours, maybe 10 hours, maybe 12 hours a day, creating income for himself. Because if you make $100 a day for 30 days, that's three grand. He's already making the minimum. Now, what I hope he makes more, uh, he builds something that he can kind of sustain, of course. But, but this is the stuff you're seeing on YouTube is a lot of people who are spending hours and hours on day on the computer, they might as well make money, right? I know a millionaire who makes 48K a year living off interest. Um, he's a millionaire, by the way. I mean, Michael, listen, listen. There's a great guy on, I think his name is Will Motivation. He even tells you he buys the cars for YouTube purposes. But he literally flips like one or two houses a year. And when he flips them or he buys a piece of land, works with the builder, builds the house up. By the time the rest of the neighborhood gets built up, I don't know if y'all know this. A lot of times you buy new construction or you're the first person to build the neighborhood. You may build for 250. By the time they get to the end of the neighborhood, it's 350. So a lot of times people will buy that first house. They'll wait a year if they maybe they rent it out or it take a long time to get into it. And then they sell it in a year and get that hundred thousand dollars. Right. But they but they got to they got to keep moving that money. Right. Because of taxes. And so a lot of times what people look over small, easy things are complete businesses. We were come on now. Come on now. Hey, hey, hey. You here you go with that. Here we go with that. Yep. IT and STEM have a high burnout rate. Several of my friends, when they got to about 30, 31, 32, yeah, they were making money and having nice cars and traveling with their IT jobs, but they were fast tracking it to go home to have babies or fast tracking it to like, hey, me and my wife are going to travel for six months. And I'm like, y'all just both going to quit y'all jobs? Trust me. Hey, 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 here we go. Now, so this is this is always my argument again. Ooh, hey, 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 I'm going to go there. What you been doing the past 10 years? I know people like Erica redlining, the banks be doing bad loans and in high interest credit cards. And I'm going to just say it again. A lot of the stuff people are talking about, what have you been doing the past five to 10 years? Have you bought a home? Have you bought some land? Have you bought a trailer? Have you built a business? If these are all no's, I don't really want to hear it from you. I, a lot of people go, well, because the history. Listen, I get it. I'm your number one component for I agree with you on historically we've been treated bad in this country. Historically, people have done bull s, but guess what? We still had people be multimillionaires, AG Gaston, all these people we can name in the South. I mean, um, God, I hate to forget his name. He's a very light skinned black guy. Um, and he's running, he's in New York now, running for Senate. His whole family, the reason they are the who they are in Tennessee is they owned all the black funeral homes because you couldn't get buried at a white funeral home. So they had a business in the middle of this racism that you said they couldn't have a business. Nobody's burning down a funeral home. Nobody. Right. Um, before, you know, you guys see a lot of the 60s where we're trying to integrate. We had fully black hospitals with all black nurses, black doctors, black midwives, all that stuff. We had it. As integration started, a lot of those doctors became older. We, they just had to be absorbed by what? The inter integrated hospitals. OK, because it's about money. Where do you spend your money? Right. My biggest thing is in the next year or two, trying to get some farmland and on top of that, build some new construction stuff. So most of us are comfortable where we're at instead of venturing off take risks for sure. And, and Jordan Williams, the sad part is what happens is people get 50 something, 60 something. They fall down. They have an accident. Um, they start to have to work for somebody young at work and then they get mad. That's all it is.
I know it, it's cracked me up. It, it cracked me up. See, that's the thing. People really don't want to talk about it. The truth is your grandma was pushing your grandma to build grandpa to build that house, work them jobs, get all that money he could get. People don't want to hear that door. Thank you. I know a couple of six-figure engineering that walked away. They were on call 24-7. Yeah, and this is the thing people are like, well, you know, I've been making six figures in IT for a long time. So you've had an opportunity to take excess money, which is why you see the fire movement. Take that money and put it somewhere. Take that money and move it. You've had an opportunity. So there you go. Sir Anthony. Even Chicago, right now you said you're working in tech Chicago. 50% of black men are unemployed in Chicago. Chicago is a bastion for work, but they have a lot of what? Nepotism. You can see it in the comments. You can see all the videos about Chicago, a lot of nepotism. What does that mean? What is nepotism? It's where you have a job that you, you create a job at your company, but you don't do what? You're going to hire your children first, your family first, their friends first. You just don't know no black people. It's not racism. It's just nepotism. And a lot of people don't want to address that. And the fact that when I talk about one in 10 Asians have a business, who are they going to hire? Their children. One in 34 whites have a business. Who are they going to hire? Their family and friends and people that look like them. One in 54 Hispanics have a business. Who are they going to hire? People that look like them. People ready to go to work. People say the same language. One in 108 <laughs> blacks own a business. Who are you going to hire? People that look like you. People that work like you. Majority of black businesses have one, two business owners. A lot of people discount the fact that government contractors do what? Get these big government contracts and break them and bust them down to other people. Okay. So again, um, you cannot legislate people to like you. You cannot legislate people to force them to hire you. You cannot force people to work with you. Th these are, these are unrealistic expectations. Again, when they start talking about people, um, this economy, oh, people are quitting these jobs instead of going back to offices because they did the math. It don't make no sense to drive in this traffic and commute for the amount of pay they're getting. And instead of people going, well, you know, I might need to get some new skills and get higher pay. A lot of them are going, these wages are too low. No, your job is not that important. Just as facts. If you don't stop, Sir Afni, stop it right now. Men, men are key. Men are key. This is true. The average person during the recession lost their home for $500 a month. And this is why people get drunk on side hustles. They're like, oh, I just got to get a side hustle. I just got to get a side hustle. And I'm like, a side hustle is technically a side business because you have to market it. You have to keep track of it. And this is why people get burnt out. They'll do a side hustle, but they don't put the money in a separate account and keep track of all of it. How do you know how much you're even making from that side hustle if you're not separately tracking it with QuickBooks or software or just the numbers? You out here just spinning your wheels, getting exhausted. Prime example, there was a video between Gary Vee and Grant Cardone. Uh, I think Gary Vee went to Grant Cardone's studios when he had the TVs behind him. And he was like, is it better for the man to make 50,000 a year at a job or 50,000 a year to business? Well, Gary Vee goes, well, it's better to have 50000 in his own business, make 40 k in his own business. And Grant Cardone's like, bump that. I don't think either one's working. I think if you're going to be in a business, you need to make 100 k You need to get that money up 10x, right? You know, 10x, you know how he is. And, of course, Gary Vee kind of, mm, you know, they clashed on that. But that's the truth. That man or woman needs to figure out, how do I grow this business? The last two years, I added people to one of my companies, and that one person, that one person on staff getting paid $17 an hour, got me 80 interviews. They got me, I think, 150 promos um, on various links, various pages, and helped generate revenue to the business. Period. Just that one person. Our one VA that gets paid 100 a week, um, literally, Follow up questions. People will email us in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning. I don't know why they up. They up, right? Common sense say, won't you put your mail on sin in the future to like 8 a.m.? But they don't. So Enrique's out there answering emails at like one in the morning <laughs> because that's the, that's, that's the kind of nature of people. And if you don't structure your business to say, hey, from this time to this time, from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. I'm not taking your calls. I'm not answering anything from you. Hey, or we're not going to meet once a week. If you don't have enough discipline to put those systems and barriers for yourself and your business. You will be damaged by it.
Last week we had it on, um, we didn't have autoresponder on all emails, just one. And people still were like, oh, is you still gone? <laughs> yeah, boo, it's a whole week. <laughs> Oh my God. Nope. My last year in corporate, my boss handed me a single, had me single-handedly do a credit accreditation report, which normally it takes four, six figure department chairs to work on it together. But he said, I know you get it all done. I'd have been like, no, sir. That's a wrap. No, thank you. I mean, this is so crazy. See, medical sales part time. She makes a lot of money. And a lot of this stuff is just systematic follow up, systematic phone calls. There's a um, I was going to hire somebody to do our wholesaling calls. And then I paid the company that several of the guys out of Houston pay. It works like a charm. Eleven dollars an hour. I ain't got to worry about it. Just I'm just going to be very, very clear. People got to realize the real PPP is P pan paper. <laughs> I mean, the, the truth of the matter is a lot of times what people don't understand is these government contracts, man, some people are about to make crazy bank with these government contracts. There you go. Oh, dang, you moved to Dallas. Now you're heading to New York City. Congrats. Enjoy New York City. Um, listen, they don't. Her name is like Cat Theo. You really do. Once you realize how to work some of these things, you can put in a system. Again, work hard now, live easy later. This is true. Thank you, Financial Hawks, for this. Uh, thank you for the $10 cash app, uh, Super Chat. A lot of times what people get frustrated in is um, it looks easy, right? We're just going to go there. It looks easy. Prime example, people buying trucks. Buying the truck is the easiest part of the whole procedure. That's nothing. The whole system side of the business with the hiring drivers and all that other stuff, that's the system part, right? Um, same thing with box trucks, spinner vans, all that stuff. All that stuff, getting the asset is the easiest part. Same thing, when you buy rentals, sign the dollar line, give the cash money, boom, buy the rental. The repairs and the tenant stuff, that's the hard stuff, okay? Uh, the follow-up, the upkeep, that's the hard stuff, right? That's the systems we're talking about. When people create blogs, you can create a blog in 20 minutes. You can follow a step-by-step -step and create a blog. The consistency to post twice a week. The consistency to post once a week. If you post once a week for a year, that's 52 articles. 52 articles is enough to put together in an ebook. Again, a lot of this stuff is systems. And people talk about internet marketers, but there are a lot of businesses where people just do online stuff for companies. You really can't. Got to find systems. Is this live, Anthony Johnson? Yeah, I'm live. But when I'm talking, I'm going to focus on what I'm talking about. I'm not going to read the comments every two minutes. <laughs> struggle streams. It cracks me up every time he says it. Our blocking is life changing. That's right. India cannot send anyone for the rest of the year. Apply for those tech jobs. I forgot. That's right. They've got a, a whole different uh, version of uh, what do you call it? The virus. I'll just say that. No, I don't believe necessarily automatic blogs, uh, but you may be asking her that. 100K in net income in the article. What they're talking about in the article is 100K in net income. Now, in order to get 100K in net income, that means really your company needs to make probably like 200,000 or 250,000. It depends on the margins. I'm gonna give you a prime example. One of my companies, it can make half a million and I get 85% of what it makes. One of my e-commerce stuff things I'm doing right now, uh, let's, say the, let's say the product, we're gonna give you rough numbers. Let's say the product is $100. $100. I'm gonna get 32 of the dollars. Okay, so out of that 32 after everything said and done, out of that 32, I got to pay some what? Some marketing. So let's say I just take 10 off the top for marketing. That means it's a $22 profit at the end of that $100. See what I'm saying? So different companies, if you say, hey, you need to make 100000 it's different things for different companies. 
Do I think it's because opening a business is scary for people versus a check every two weeks? For sure. People have been trained to like, I do a little work, I get a little pay. I do a little work, I get a little pay. This is even in business owners. You'll meet guys who do construction, contracting, roofing, do a little work, get paid. What's funny is we use um, Peter in Uganda and we also use somebody in, in, in Philippines. They're very much like, am I getting paid today? Peter will do three edit video editing, some posters and some other stuff. Okay, am I getting paid right now? Am I getting paid right now? Am I paid already? When am I getting paid? Paid right now? Paid right now? And this is one, it's cultural, one. And two, that just is how it is. Ooh, Anthony. Anthony, careful working seven days a week. That You got to take a break. Thirty five K ain't it. Traveling does help with the burnout, but again, that's where you meet business owners who never scheduled uh actual breaks, right? The more you talk to people, you realize people didn't schedule breaks, they didn't schedule time for themselves. And like I, I'm very clear, you should be scheduling one quarterly week vacation a year. Like every quarter you should, every four, all the four quarters should have one week vacation if you're a business owner. And then if you want to add it to that, like every other month, you need to be going off for a weekend somewhere. That's just is what it is. There is, there is an extreme push for that. I have two military friends who, once they got the military, they were all talking about socialism. I'm like, the what? They're like, communism isn't that bad, Erica. And we're all like, all right, you done lost it. Lost your marbles over there. Uh, any projections 10, 20 years down? I'm going to tell you right now, um, you already see what's happening. If you didn't notice under Donald Trump that business owners was out here like money bags and people who work jobs are like inflation and like what's going on with the commuter traffic? I mean, if you didn't pay attention to that, I don't, I don't know what else you need. And I felt like people wanted Donald Trump out because it was so abrasive. It was so it was like Obama came in and he was so educated and it was so beautiful. And yeah. And then Trump came in. You're like, oh, his children have jobs because he gave them jobs. He has money because his father gave him money. Oh, my God. This is so abrasive and ugly, even though that is America. Like 101. OK, Joe Biden has never had a real job. He has always been in Congress since he's in, he's in his 20s. And yet you will talk to people like, yeah, Joe Biden, go help fix the economy. How? He's never owned a business. Never had a job outside of Congress. Never. All right. So you have these people who are in these positions of continual, I'm not going to say necessarily privilege, but continual position that somebody put them in and we get mad about it. What are you going to do about it? If you don't own any land. Now, prime example, I'm going to do another video, I think tomorrow on it. But right now, Las Vegas and the federal government is kind of itchy. They have multiple Native American tribes who took money that they had was like, you know what we're going to do? Oh, pandemic's here. Let's buy up a bunch of stuff. Pandemic happens. They bought up pieces of land in Las Vegas. Now, what are they going to do when they bought up these pieces of lands in Las Vegas? And it's not just one tribe. It's like seven tribes. They're going to build little casinos. Now, what's going to be different? Even if they build a little hotel, a little casino in Las Vegas, people are going to be like, oh, my God, this is a Native American museum um, casino. I'm going to go support this casino. I'm going to go to this new casino. Y'all know how Vegas is. They want to do the new, new. What's the new location? What's the new hotel? What's the new casino? These tribes aren't stupid because at the end of the day, guess what it comes down to? Ownership. When we were in Alaska, there were a lot of Samoans out there. And they were there from the military, other reasons. There were a Samoan family that owned a liquor store. We in there, every single person in this liquor store is Samoan. I'm like, some big A women, some six foot tall women. Good gracious. And I realized, I looked on the wall and there it is. Thank you for supporting our family business and every little Samoan family member in the picture. We went to the museum in Alaska. The reason you have a whole floor of Black Lives Matter in the museum in Alaska is the prominent black families who 1930s, 1940s, I mean, you don't know this. They sent 4,000 black soldiers to help build the roads in Alaska. Um, a lot of those people, they became bush pilots. They had skills. They, come, they ain't going back to Mississippi. They ain't going back to Alabama. They stayed on up there. If you actually look at some of the natives, they were 
dark. I mean, I'm talking about this phone dark in Alaska until they start, you know, marrying intermarrying with whites. And so you have a whole floor of black people on there. And we said one black man came from Chicago, got out the military in Alaska once he was done and was like, started a real estate company, started an oil company, started an insurance company. I mean, he is like the King Don of Chicago in Alaska. And his family litters all the floors. He bought Billie Holiday. No, uh, somebody older than him bought Billie Holiday up to Alaska for a show. They bring in all kind of famous people to Alaska to do shows for black people. You know, and what you realize is if you actually go somewhere, you actually start creating things. You actually start a company. People come work for you. People come work with you and do what you want them to do. People come build up your dream. See, but the people don't really want to be responsible for that. And we really have to do address society. The fact is, most men can coast. There's a video of the roommates posted. Most men will go coast if they don't have to struggle or they don't have to work extra hard or, or they don't have to make a ton of money for a family. It's just me. Make enough money for me. I don't care. There's really no incentive for them to buy a house. There's really no incentive for them to buy a farm. There's really no incentive for them to kind of build all these things that we would expect in our society. So again, these things play into part. There you go. Oh, Mississippi is huge with black businesses. Let me see. Um, there you go. Listen, congrats. I mean, that's really nice. She just said Donald T. Spann uh, started a virtual call center and he later sold the company for seven figures after five years. Nepotism. Subcontracting. You know, thank you, Enrique, because I'll be in bed. We do have our versions of a nepotism for sure. But I mean, nepotism that actually benefits you. That means me being able to own a house, me being able to go, if something was a if crazy emergency, if I lost a leg or something outrageous happened here in Texas, I know I can go back to North Carolina and sit in one of my family's houses and also have a job at the community college or with the local police force doing administrative work. Something to that effect because I have a family who does what? Practices nepotism. I'm a career consultant and the truth is people would rather complain repeatedly then get help to get a higher level paying job. Listen, you saw what happened when they tried to offer the coal miners. Um, they were like, hey, we're going to get you guys, you know, some other skills. You can put honeybees in your backyard. You can do all stuff. And they're like, honeybees? What are we going to do with honeybees? That ain't going to make you no money. Completely forgetting the fact that if you have local honeybees, and you can sell it to local factories and local places or get bigger contracts and sell it to grocery stores. See, people don't want to switch what they're doing. They want to keep doing what they're doing and be paid high. There are lots of evictions going on right now. Lots of service businesses need to be formed to fight these evictions. Possible, yeah. True. Uh, high school, high school don't diploma don't don't matter about your dag on high school diploma. Government contracts are if you got a business. Okay, do you have a business? Uh, listen, the woman just got elected to Congress. She didn't even have her GED. She got it right before she finished running for Congress. Come on now. Y'all be y'all be trying to play. Don't try to use your victim excuse for why you can't do something. You can do it. You ain't got nothing to do with HGD. There you go. I have clients that went from 30K to 90K, 50K to 93,000 in real life, and there are us through the roof. Just get any career, good career consultant. You will come up. Um, it, it depends on the government contract. It depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're bidding on. My personal trainer is a Marine vet and he's bidding on contract right now. And so trust me, it, it's a lot. I live in Detroit and it's depressing. I'm working towards passive income. So soulful moment. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is uh, change, move, move houses, uh, move cities or go visit parts of Michigan that have beautiful lakes, beautiful trees. There's a lot of beautiful parts of Michigan. Um, so you can do that. You're getting Terry's course. I hope you're getting it with my affiliate link, baby. See what else. Yeah. Check out Sam fit. Yeah. Joint ventures. Mm hmm. All those. <laughs> I mean, again, a lot of people get frustrated when you start talking about having, um, 
you know, starting a business because you want to make more money. Well, you know, everybody can't run a business, Erica. And I'm like, you don't even understand the systems you're talking about, right? So th that's the, really the frustrating part. I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it like this. Oh, I got a call coming up. I'm going to leave it like this. Majority of people I talk to, when they start, prime example, there's a young man, he bought one semi truck. He's making some money. Then he bought two cars, cheap cars to put on Turo. Then he bought a rental property. He's not going back to work. He, and he has a wife and a small baby. And he's not going back to work. Because the money generated from those four things and that they live very cheaply, give them plenty of money. If you're in my right 20% class, if you're in my YouTube class, I talk about it all the time. A lot of it is systems and marketing, consistently marketing. That's it. That's it. You have to find a business that fits. That's right. Fits your skills. Again, puts you in the correct alignment. And I talk about, uh, there's a video coming out Sunday where I talk about trucking. There's a video coming out Monday, Tuesday, where I talk about uh, starting small businesses uh, with the help of guidance or whatever. And, and again, people talk, I think Lyndon calls them template businesses. Whatever works. If the template gets you 100 racks, okay, who cares? Oh, yeah. Jaja, ma'am, that's hard. When it's 100% commission, it's really hard. Well, now, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. If you if you saw the writing on the wall with Trump and how things were going. And you see now Biden then got the fence started back up again. Come on now. That's what I'm saying. Listen, the number one, the first time I ever watched Breakfast Club is when Dame Dash was on there arguing about starting a business and they were fighting him about starting a business. Huh? They're like, ain't nothing wrong with a job. Ain't nothing wrong with a job. OK, well, isn't that wrong to start a business? You know, you can tell people that, but they ain't trying to hear that. That's right. People really will scrub down. You can do contract work for 150 an hour to 200 an hour. And so and do that for six months. There you go. And, and then do something else or, or keep going. That's the thing people don't understand. <laughs> Larry Wiggins, well, thank you. I'm trying. The rental moratorium, it, again, each city and each state is different. Each county is different. Um, I'm here in, in Texas and people are like, they're kicking people out in Texas. No, not in Austin, not in Pflugerville. Um, we're, we're a very liberal spot in the center of Texas. We ain't kicking nobody out. Nobody getting put out. Not yet, but probably like 16 days from now, they'll start doing it. But Houston, Houston had already started putting people out. Parts out west of Dallas, they were putting people out, you know. So, again, um, you, you got to be careful. You know what, Tay Tay, you can do it. You just have to hour block your time. I wouldn't put more than an hour in afternoon or doing the notary stuff on the weekends. Um, no mobile notary stuff. So, dang, my ex got a $35 million contract with the government. He did body work on cars, got to do police cars, the tanks, and changed his life. Your ex, go back, girl. No. <laughs> I'm just messing. Uh, no limit. I don't even know who this is. I don't even know who you're talking about. But I'll Google them, but I don't I don't have no guarantee for that. Thank you, Arlene Speaks. She said, a government contract does not require a certain degree. I bid on sources Sources sought contracts now and never been asked for my degree. You need a capability statement. Thank you so much for displaying that. Arlene speaks it. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm in here cutting up. I'm going to have a good time either way. Currently a freight, freight worker, but thinking about getting Kamoy's class. Listen, I, I mean, I bring on a lot of tech people on Tuesdays. Again, right now it's the summer. It's kind of my summer break slash realignment slash alignment and abundance season. Um, so, you know, I still have to make some flights in between here, but I am. And again, you like there's like 51 days before the tour kicks off. So, again, you're going to be we're gonna do a lot of marketing on that. So you may not be seeing me. No, not PPP loan frog. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, no, no. A lot of businesses do make 100000 But what happens is, Big Facts Brooklyn, a lot of people write off so much. And this is the problem with business owners. They write off everything. And look, I only paid a little bit of taxes. And then now when they want to qualify for business loans, they want to qualify for stuff. It's, it's like traumatic because they can't qualify for it. So 
hey, listen, um, there's millions. I think there's like right now 1.8 million black businesses in America, maybe 2.1 million. If you go actually go on CDC black demographics.com, but you have to forget sometimes people have multiple businesses. So, um, and also you have a lot of them in construction and healthcare. Not transportation. What you think on the internet? This is why, again, I'm very clear about don't follow this internet because if you follow this internet, you think everybody's in construction, transportation. Um, if you actually go on Black Demographics, let me see if I can pull it up real quick for our rollout. Uh, here we go. And share this with y'all real quick. Uh, wait, y'all not even seeing my screen. Hold on. And again, when it comes to that whole PPP thing, they're they're pulling many people from being just being silly. Um, because here's the thing: when those people call you and ask you for bank statements, if these people don't have bank statements to pack this stuff up, they're gonna get them. Okay, here we go. Um, here it is. Okay. So this is about, uh, this is blackdemographics.com. You can check it out here. I clicked on business again, um, uh, business by industry, other services is other than public administration, 653,000 transportation, 525,000 and warehousing, right? Uh, healthcare and social assistance for 431,000 administration support, waste management, redemption, all that 300,000. Professional scientific seal services, 200,000. You can see that right here. Retail trade, 158,000. Construction, 150,000. See that? Like real estate, rental and leasing, 95,000. See, you would think trucking and real estate would be the top two things. It's not. That's why when I tell people, get out of, get off this man's internet, y'all living in a magical bubble and get frustrated by what you're seeing. Now, this is a bigger breakdown, okay? Uh, with or without paid employees. So again, um, 2007 is the gray, 2012 is the blue. So people realize they doubled how many people were buying, getting business right here. Almost every one of these doubled. Well, mostly this one and this one. Healthcare, number one, number two. Tr uh, waste management, professional, scientific, and technical. Um, go down here. Educational services, food services. Food is way down here. Black people act like everything black people do is a food job. Food is way down here. There's only 60,000. Okay. Insurance, 43,000. Information, 28,000. Wholesale trade, 24,000. Manufacturing, 22,000. Utilities, mining, oil, gas extraction, 1,026. I want to find out who these folks are right here. Um, management of companies and enterprise, 196. So, again, you know, dig into the numbers, right? So, this is a good, another good one again. Um, how do they create jobs? How many jobs can they put? White owned companies can hire 39% of, of, of white people. Asian companies can hire 38% of Asian companies. Hispanic companies can hire 8% 8, 8 of Hispanic people. And black companies can hire 5% of black people. And we're, we're annual revenue is one, $127 billion a year. Just keeping it a buck, just showing y'all. Black businesses with paid employees. Of course, these numbers are way smaller, right? With paid employees. 32,000, right? Retail, I mean, again, the, it shifts, the whole thing shifts around. So again, come look at this stuff, come research it before you get on the internet and yes and people what they're saying. Be careful on that, boo. But that's, that's mostly all I had to give y'all today. That's what I had to give you. If you watch this show without a note play, God bless you. <laughs> Mojo, if you go back and find the channel, we already interviewed several government contract folks. Marco marketing your rise was fire. I'm telling you, it, it really blows your mind. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Anyway, all right, everybody. This is your girl Erica from the Classy Klein blog. If you want to make sure you take advantage of the discount code 75WED. 75WED, get 75% off any course. Also inside the, the live stream we've been posting, if you already have purchased courses, you want to talk to me and you want to vet some things and you want to do a small testimonial, we will have 15-minute slots on Calendly that you can click the link 
they'll be also in the description after this video renders. This is your girl, Erica, Classy Clown Blog. Thank you guys for being here today. Have a great day.